Well, hello everybody once again. Welcome back to Junk Shop Library's Improv Bible Study. We turn today to the eighth chapter of the book of Genesis. Make sure you're hitting those thumbs up as we go. Chapter 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, I be behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, and said, Entreat the Lord, that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me. When shall I entreat for thee, and for thy servants, and for thy people, to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according unto thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee, and from thy houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people, they shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the inhabitants of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not, so there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall, shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou may knowest that I am thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron, and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness, and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people, tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. 
And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. And that's Genesis chapter 8. Exodus, holy cow. Exodus. All right, frogs. Cute one or two at a time. Problematic, filling the land by the millions. And God just decides to be a jerk about every step of this. Maybe since Pharaoh's being a jerk about every step of this, maybe just for the heck of it. He calls down this massive plague of flies upon the Egyptians. And Pharaoh and uh, the magicians of Egypt call up yet even more frogs. Pharaoh calls Moses and Aaron and says, Would you get these dang frogs out of here? I can't hear myself think with all this ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Moses said, I, I, can, I can do that. When would you like it done? Pharaoh says, Tomorrow would be fine. Moses says, Okay, tomorrow. And off he walks. He goes off and consults with the Lord. And the next day, all the frogs that are filling the entire land of Egypt vanish into thin air. I'm kidding, of course. They die where they sit. In the beds and in the houses and in the streets and in the gutters and in the, the everywheres. Moses goes back to Pharaoh and says, because you're not doing what we say you should do, I has a prediction. I predict you're going to have flies. And Pharaoh looks around at these massive heaps of dead frogs that had covered the entire land that are now standing in hills all over the place, piled up, stinking and rotting, and swarming with maggots in the hot Egyptian afternoon sun, and says, Really? We're going to have flies? Moses says, Oh, you betcha. You're going to have more flies than you know what to do with. And sure enough, the next day, flies, flies everywhere. Except in Goshen. Now, we don't know at this point, and these get swept under the rug pretty quickly once we get out of it. So we don't know at this point whether Goshen got the frog problem or not. Goshen, the land where the children of Israel are spread out. Um, I think we're assumed to uh, to assume that, excuse me, I seem to have a small plaguey thing in here myself. Do, 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 do. But anyway, whether the children of Israel got uh, frogs or not, they certainly did not get flies. And Moses fights his way through the swarm down to the river. Says, hey, uh, hey, Pharaoh. I mentioned, I mentioned you were going to have a call the exterminator kind of situation, didn't I? Pharaoh says, fine, go. Get these Get these things out of here, and you can, you can, fine, fine, go, go do your sacrifice, not too far off, I want to know where you are, fine, go, go. And Moses says, yeah, that was pretty much what I was told to expect. And he goes on back down to Goshen, or at least out from Pharaoh. 
and says, Oh Lord, the flies thing, the flies thing worked. He's ready, he's ready to, hmm. He's We're all ready. Take away the flies. He says we can go into the desert and do sacrifice stuff for you. Pharaoh has had enough of the flies. And so the Lord poofs away all the flies. And Pharaoh wakes up the next morning and says, Ah. Oh, no flies, no frogs, drinkable water. I've carved or had carved replacement walking sticks for my magicians. Life is good. Somebody make sure and go tell those Hebrews, April Fool, they ain't going nowhere. And that's the end of the chapter. Which brings us to, let's see. Snakes weren't technically a plague. That was a, a sign and a portent. So we've got watered blood. That was last time. This time we had frogs and lice. Ooh, lice. Aren't you glad I didn't decide to do improv theater with the lice? All right. Uh, blood, frogs, lice, flies. Four. All right. So we've got six more plagues to get to. I'll be honest, I don't know which ones are in the King James Version, because in some versions, some traditions, and some interpretations, what is visited upon the house of Pharaoh are remarkably different. Is remarkably. Different versions have different stuff. But we will see you back here again soon for chapter 9 of Exodus. Hit that thumbs up button for me and poke the pope. Make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for that, by the way, number eight. Welcome aboard. Everybody take care, be safe, and we will see you again soon for more plagues.